If you're thinking of getting this scooter, turn this video off and just get it. This is the most emotional scooter I've ever ridden. But if you're still on the fence, stick around. Let's find out why. So let's get into the specs, but before we do so, if this is your first time coming to the channel, it's nice to have you. My name's Robin and we do a lot of videos about tech, smartphones, how-tos, everything. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, stick around, we're happy to have you. Okay, let's talk about specs. So the scooter comes in at around 12 kilograms, has a thousand watt max power as well as a 32 kilometer max speed, which is frighteningly fast for a scooter. It has dual 250 watt motors, as well as a 9,000 milliamp hour battery, which might not sound like much, but I'll talk to that later. So let's talk about design. And well, just looking at this thing, you can see it's pretty dang sleek, especially when it comes to other scooters. The front handlebar is made with a special sort of Japanese carbon fiber called Torre. The uh, whole body is machined from a single piece of aluminium. And as well, you'll notice the wheels, they look a little funny. They're a spoked airless design. And what's special about that is, is each of these spokes act as a sort of front and rear suspension. The kickstand as well is designed in such a way that when it's retracted into the body, it sort of just disappears. As well on the front handlebars, you'll find that there's a flush LED light that helps illuminate the way in front of you. It's 47 lumens, which is reasonably bright for light. And you also find a red one on the back so that anyone behind you can see you also. But you just have to look at this thing to understand what I'm talking about. It's got a sleek sculpted stem which collapses with just one press, which makes transporting this thing really dang simple. Now, keep in mind, it's still 12 kilograms, so it's not the lightest scooter in the world. I wouldn't carry this thing around while I'm going grocery shopping. But compared to some scooters, especially the kind you'll find at Lyman Bird, this thing is a simple task to carry around, especially if you're just taking this up and down the stairs while getting on the subway. So, how is it to ride? Well, you'll notice there aren't any shocks or pneumatic tires on this, but it does have those airless spoked wheels we talked about earlier. And those provide a level of shock absorption, which I found out to be really quite good. In fact, I rode this over grass and gravel and found the ride to be quite comfortable. But in addition to that, when it comes to riding over harsh surfaces like broken nails outside of a construction site or broken glass on the side of the road, with those puncture-proof rubber designed tires, you won't find yourself changing tubes on the side of the road or making that walk of shame to work the rest of the way. But in general, this scooter is a lot of fun to ride and there's not much of a learning curve. When it comes to actually setting off, you gotta give it a little push to actually engage the motors, but that's really helpful for beginners because it means there's no sudden spike in acceleration like you might find on an electric skateboard. And also when it comes to handling, what I found is that actually when I was increasing speeds or going down hills, the ride actually became more secure. And that makes sense given how the scooter is actually designed. And this is a big help because when it comes to your commute, Anything more stable, it just kind of makes you feel more confident and comfortable. And speaking of beginners, there's actually three modes when it comes to speed. You got beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Now, the beginner mode tops out around 15 kilometers an hour, whereas the advanced tops out at 32 kilometers an hour. And this is where you'll see those 250 watt dual motors really shine. I'll tell you, the look on cyclist's face as I zoom past while going uphill, will never get old. You can change these settings uh, using the display and also the navigation buttons on the handlebar. You can change things like kilometers to miles, you can turn on and off the light, you can switch between dual motor mode and single motor mode, and as well, you can see how much battery is left. But this is also where you will find my least favorite button, the horn. This thing is downright embarrassing to use. The feeling I get using it is akin to forgetting your lines on stage and then also peeing yourself. You'll get attention, just not the right attention. I'd honestly rather yell or slow down if something was in my way than use the horn. So 
I'd really like to see in a future firmware update, maybe just some of their horn options, just something else that I don't have to use the sound that's on there currently. So where exactly is the value? Well, this scooter has reduced my commute by 20 minutes. What used to be an overall 30 minute transit commute has turned into a 10 minute scoot. And I'm pretty much guaranteed that with those puncture proof tires because I don't have to worry about any mechanical issues such as flats or tube replacements. And with a proposed range of 25 kilometers, this has the potential to be more than just that last mile kind of vehicle. At full tilt, I got about 13 and a half kilometers using dual motor mode before getting any sort of battery warning. So as you can imagine, if I drove just a little bit more conservatively, I could probably get 25 kilometers or more. But you know, where's the fun in that? But that's pretty crazy considering this has a battery that's the same size as one that you might find in a power drill. Bring a charger with you and this can become your whole commute vehicle. And you could even take it out for urban exploration. Okay, let's get into the downsides. But you know what doesn't have any downsides? Subscribing to our channel and liking this video. And you know what, if you have something to say, let us know in the comments below. Okay, let's get into it. So, there are a few things I don't like. The horn that I mentioned. Not a fan, but that can be resolved with a firmware update, please. Secondly, I do wish there was an app. Unfortunately, there's not. You do get enough information on that handlebar display, but it would be really great if I could see how many kilometers or miles I had left, or temperature of the battery or any sort of further diagnostics or information that would be handy to see through an app. And the price. This is a $1,400 scooter in Canada. And that is a lot of money, especially when you consider the price of some of the other scooters available. But it, it's hard to say that the price isn't justified when you see the list of features that I've just mentioned throughout the video. So if you can picture being stuck in rush hour traffic on a Monday morning, or imagine being on the side of the road because your bus broke down and now you're late to work, well, instead, imagine going whatever route you want to because this is perfect for urban exploration. Or just imagine getting to work on time because those 250 watt motors are gonna get you there. And more importantly, imagine the smile on your face when you arrive just because you're using this scooter on the way to work. And that's how I feel. And frankly, you can't put a price on that. Thank you so much for checking out this video and I really hope you enjoyed it. If you want to stick around and watch some more videos, I have the perfect one for you. I just did a review on the Huawei FreeBuds 4i. Now, these are Huawei's budget offering when it comes to buds, but you'll see their feature set is anything but. So why don't you click right over here and check that video out. I'd really appreciate it. Right there. Go on. Give it a go.